Are you struggling getting your rounds over the line? We're going to talk today about the last three holes, what you can do to help you lower your scores, get your handicap down, and enjoy your golf a little bit more. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the Everyday Golfer. Welcome back to Mid Handicap Dave. How are you doing? Very good. Yourself? I'm fine, thank you. So we are finishing off Dave's 18 holes here at his home club, Garforth, off the championship tees, off the uh, competition tees even. Today, par 3, 16th hole. Dave, how far have we got? 183 to the pin, which is at the back. 183 to the pin, which is at the back. So what club have you gone, Dave? So we've gone hybrid? Yep, four we've... hybrid. Four hybrid, okay. So not the easiest of finishes here at Garforth. We know this is a nice long par three on the back nine. We then have a Without couple... Without a shot, by the way. Without a shot. And then we have a couple of long par fours where Dave does get shot. So here it's essential that we uh, try and get out of this one without dropping anything. We know the par threes here at Garforth have been a little bit of an Achilles heel for Dave in this series. So he's on left side of the tee box here to try and open it up. Again, pin is on the left hand side of the green. So we're just trying to play to the middle of the green and that's a big thing. Play to the middle. Dave's also bushed on the back number or he's millicid the back number <laughs> as to make sure he's got the right club. And that is a great strike. Fading ever so it. slightly, just over the trap there. So he's got a 30 footer, but we've got a chance. So as we come up, you can see it just got over the bunker there from Dave. So he's played to the middle of the green, even with a little bit of a fade, it's finished on the right hand side, but we've got a good chance of two putting. So that's the first thing you need to take away from there is when you're on par threes or even on any hole, don't go flag hunting. Let's try and hit the middle of the green. Let's aim there. And then even your misses, even if Dave leaked it a little bit right, he's got all the green to work with. We're not going to be short-sided in a bunker or in this rough here, which makes it a very difficult shot. So Dave's done his green read, he's got this tray, but the thing here is it is all about pace. So you will see a video on the channel in the next couple of weeks on a Friday where we are talking about how you can improve your putting and it's all about how you practice your pace because I see a lot of mid-handicap golfers, low-handicap golfers who lose shots from three putts. If we work more on your pace, we're going to have less putts in general on a round. A lot of people focus on holing out from three feet. Yes, we need to do that, but if we get our pace better, then we're going to be closer to the hole and we should have more tappings. Or, like Dave, rocket it in. It might have been going off <laughs> the green. It might have been going a bit rough. too fast, that, Chris, but hey, However, the pin got in the way. We birdie, we go to three under Dave's handicap and we move on. <laughs> 17th hole now, again, closing out the last two holes now. We've got a shot on here, so stroke index five. You start to tire when you get here, so it's trying to think about what's the most conservative line, what's the easiest line. You've got a shot here, Dave's three under his handicap. We may be not thinking about pushing on and being too aggressive. We're just trying to get in play. So Dave's going to come in here with his driver, middle of the fairway. If it turns over to the left, he'll just be able maybe to sneak the front edge. And then as we know, it's all down to short game. And the guys, if you're looking to improve your game, if you're wanting online lessons or in-person lessons, please do drop me an email on the email below. We will look at getting your game sorted out so we can lower your scores. started up the rise we set up the left but dave's decided to go an aggressive line but that could have worked nicely it wasn't intentional chris i can assure you it's a good bad one so dave's just managed to sneak past the tree so he has took the aggressive line through this over the bunker but a better strike a little bit higher launch than he has in previous weeks so we have been working on something which we're going to do a video on again what we've been working on with dave's driver because it has been a little bit of a Achilles heel for the year. <laughs> he's scored okay, but his driver's certainly not uh, gained, him, gained him shots. And that's a great strike. A perfect five hybrid. Landing left side of the green. Oh, Come around, use the contours. He's used the contours there majestically. Anyone would have thought he's played here before. So after on the tee, we said not about being aggressive. Dave just played two easy shots there, so he's played a fantastic drive. Again, not the line I would have chosen. He's got a bit lucky with it getting past the trees, and then he's hit it just past pin high. So we get a shot here. So Dave's already three under. 
You see, Chris, I think this is where you might be going wrong. You, you seem to think that I've got complete control over my line. That, that's true, Dave. I, I'm giving you a bit too much credit, I think. Try not to hit it quite as hard as I did not last. Yeah, let's not try and knock the flag out. So Dave left the flag in for a reason, clearly, on the last, after the big discussion about pace. But pace, very important, like we said here. If you can improve your pace, you could go on to your putting green and just practice putting to your fringe from different distances, not focusing on the hole. So Dave's decided to get his pace better there, but he's decided to get the line wrong there. So you know what that was, don't you? Go I on. didn't walk down my line, did I, Chris? You, no, you didn't go down there and get the read. But left himself a little bit of a tester, but we've known Dave's been holding these out well on this series. Dave, again, strongest point of his game is obviously in and around the greens. And that's what we like to see from Dave. We know as a mid-handicap golfer, unfortunately, even as a... A single figure, even as a scratch player, you're going to miss green. So short game is very, very important. And taking your time, making sure you line it up and give it the respect it deserves. And that's nice and easy. And that's Dave, four under as we go to the last. So, last hole for Dave. Four under his handicap, absolutely buzzing. The sun is out here at Garforth. Look at this for And what's nice... the question I ask? Put some negative straight into my mind. Yeah, Dave was asking, should he hit driver here? He's just hit a great drive up the last. He's then thinking about it. And that's exactly what a mid-handicap does, questions himself, because they've probably got a few negative memories of this tee shot. A Give few? Him... <laughs> a few. A few thousand for Dave. But again, a narrow tee shot here, but you've just got to commit to it. Dave's going to aim at the right half, just right of the path. And again, he's been working on his driving. We're going to put a lesson on in the coming weeks of showing you what we've actually worked on with Dave. What is the feel? Because feel and real is different. And that's what you've got to make sure. When you go for lessons, a feel might be a little bit different to what it actually looks like. And that's what we have done with Dave. And we've got him hitting it higher, straighter and longer. And again higher, longer, straighter, and just up the right half of the fairway. Dave's not now worrying about where he normally goes in those Can't believe bushes. that, Chris, well done. So down here now, obviously Dave's just saying that he's never been down this side unless he's actually hit one off another hole, but we can see we're blocked out by trees, but Dave is getting him out of the thing, or the thoughts of hitting it out of bounds. Like we said, we aimed down the right hand side. I was just saying to Dave there, as he gradually maybe hits a couple down here, he can start to move his aim back towards the middle. So club, Dave? Seven iron, Chris. Seven iron, okay. So Dave's on a little bit of an upslope. He's thinking that we could get over with a seven iron. We've got around about 200 yards to the green. Obviously, this is just going to get Dave back in play. So he's going to go between the trees here. The same feel that we've had throughout his clubs. That's just caught the top branch, but has got through fine there and he's running down the fairway. So just caught it. Maybe could have gone eight time if it was being picky, yeah. but you got to Plus trust I pulled it a little bit, Chris. It wasn't exactly the line that I was going for, but then again, I'm 12 handicapper. It doesn't always stay on the line. It I was never going goes on the line, you say, Dave. So let's get down there. So you can see the tree, obviously the branch did take a little bit out of it. We've got less than... 100 yards now so i think we've got around about 80 yards into the flag a lot of you will have said obviously why did you not just chip out to the side or recommend that again we could chip out to the side but as we know from an everyday golfer we might not get far enough we might get stuck in the rough there we might then rocket it over the other side where there's out of bounds which dave is already fearing but even then we're going to have a longer shot into the green so we could potentially have 150 yards in which we know from an everyday golfer we're not always going to hit close so that could bring a bunker into play that could bring you short that could take you long that could bring in a miss hit and that's going to add up your shots again Dave gets a shot on here he's now going to come in with his wedge and just try here to hit the middle of the green we can see it's a front pin we don't need to get too cute and trying to play the the holy grail shot let's just go for the middle of the green get out of with two putts and dave will finish four under his handicap eight over with a nice round of 78. Ah, it's 
gone for the low one. He's hit the middle of the green. If you can see the ball. He's just straight behind the flag, so a little bit towards the back. Not his best shot. Not my best bit. shot. I don't know. I just didn't really want to commit to it, Chris. No, not much commitment there. Slow down into the golf ball, which is what we see a lot of people when they're closing the round. Try to probably just play it too easy. But we're on there. So a little bit longer than 30 feet, Dave. You've possibly found the longest putt on the golf course. So we've got around about 65 feet. So to our average, we would be expecting to three putt from here. So don't beat yourself up if you do. We're hoping that Dave sneaks out of here with two putts because then he finishes four under for a 78. Although even three putts would seem under 80 and three under his handicap. He certainly gave it some. Go on. He's liking the line. You've got to be pleased with that, Chris. It didn't need much more, Dave. I mean, again, another foot, and that was right in the middle. So, good read there from Dave. Let's see him tap this in. Again, take his time. Just because it's the last hole, it's not going to not line this ball up. He's going to make sure that he gets this lined up, goes through his routine. He knows, gets this in, four under the handicap. Thanks for coming off the championship tees. He's now just got to do it with a card in his hand. <laughs> Which is a minor detail for everyone, as we know, as everyday golfers. Get in. So, that's 78 guys here at Garforth from the Championship Tees. Thank you very much, Thank Dave. Thank you very much, Chris. And thank you very much to Garforth.